And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at uh, one of the newest Funkoverse set, Alice in Wonderland. This excites me. Uh, the last Funkoverse thing I looked at was Darkwing Duck. Now we have Alice in Wonderland. This opens up the entire Disney universe to Funkoverse. And this is a set you can play by itself. You can play against the other Funkoverse sets. And in fact, folks, I'm talking here for this particular review as if you have already know how to play Funkoverse. If you don't, I'll put a link to my main review in the description of the video. But we're just going to talk about the characters and things that get added here. It's Alice and the Queen, a couple mallets, and a new scenario. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the characters. First, we have Alice here. Alice has the White Rabbit minion token. So several of the new sets have minion tokens that, that can be summoned. So whenever she's exhausted, the minion token comes out. By the way, Alice has a defense of two, which is good. Anyway, the Alice can move around, and she moves one towards the White Rabbit. That's okay. The White Rabbit can go around and do stuff. Has a defense of one. Not bad. You can use that extra kind of a minion. Uh, Alice's ab abilities are interesting. She can move, shoot over to a token that's three squares. That gives her some pretty fast movement. And when you combine that with grow, move, grow Smaller, she can move two and move through rivals and obstructions. That's really handy on a board. She can move through things. That's even better than moving through rivals. And then I like the fact that she has Grow Larger, too, which lets her do a challenge of two to each adjacent rival and push them. Now, the queen is very different. Well, I mean, that makes sense, right? The queen comes with a temper card. And whenever the queen has temper, that happens here. So basically, when a rival the queen says doesn't interact or an assist, you put the temper status card on the two of the cooldown track. And while that this card is on the cooldown track, the queen is angry. This affects two of her spaces and her special ability because she gets angry and she can do a move or challenge. But she has this amazing off with her heads ability, which is a challenge four. That's fantastic, except when she's angry, the ability cost goes down by two. That's even better. A challenge of four, but you can just stick it on the one and you can use it next turn if you stay angry. You want her to get angry. Basically, she is a kind of character who you don't want to do, be, do things around her. You want your characters to stay away from her. She also has all ways or my ways. Move one, and Allie doesn't move two. And if she's angry, they can also fight. And she can just make someone come to her, a rival or a token, and bring it within two squares. Now, you notice that each of them has a mallet in their hands. And there is the pink flamingo mallet and the green flamingo mallet. These are essentially weapons. They both are challenge three. The pink one lets you move one in challenge three, and the green one knocks somebody back. Challenges three, and then moves the target back. I wanted to mention one of the scenarios in here because it's Croquette, which is certainly one of the more unusual scenarios I've seen. In this one, you still have point tokens you can interact with, you still can knock people out, but you have the balls here, which you can use. Your team is going to be moving around and you don't need the mallets, anybody can do it. When you're next to a ball, you can challenge the ball and you'll roll in the number of successes that you roll. So here I rolled three successes. You can hit it that many spaces, and if you move it through one of these playing cards, you put a check on it, and you get a point. So now you have to hit it through another one before you can hit it back through this one. If you hit somebody else, if you hit an obstacle, you stop, but if you hit another person, that person will move the remaining of the distance, and the ball stops. That's pretty much it, but it does add a different layer. Now, this is one side of the board. We also have a smaller side. I, I never play on the smaller sides, which is sad because I really like this side here, having the table. And there's two different scenarios for each. But like I said, the best scenario is this croquette. Components for the game are fine. I like these. They look cool. The pink and the green flamingo. The crystals that come with the game are pink. You get plenty of tokens, everything you need to play by yourself. You have two new characters, a playing card, and a kitten. 
I guess you, I never use these either, but they're extra characters that you can have in case this is the only set you get. Now, I know some of you are saying, a new scenario, Tom. There's new scenarios in every set. You're right, there is. Each set has scenarios. Most of these scenarios are fairly cookie cutter. They're one, there's, there's been minor variations. This one, I felt, was one of the most unique ones to croquet. It's, I, it's, it's one of the main ways I want to play the game now. Also, come on, how often do you want to play Batman versus Darkwing Duck versus the Kool-Aid Man in croquet? So that's kind of fun. But that's one thing I like about this. That's a cool scenario. But I also like the characters. Now, the queen, the queen may be in my top ten of all time. Alice is good. She's fine. But the queen, I love that temper. I love the power that she has. And the theming of it is fun. Not only that, though, I love the items here. Two mallets, which are basically attack items. There's a lot of items in this game. Men, most of them are not attack items. They do various things. But sometimes it's nice just to have something that, that hits the other person. And having this mount, I think this is, there already is a Harley Quinn's hammers in the game. This, uh, that is, you got these uh, flamingos you're hitting people with, but they're cool. They're both three challenges. One of them pushes. I like the move better. To be able to move one and then challenge, that's a really solid item to have. But they're both great, and I can see lots of people using them. So this is a great set. It's a lot of fun. Thematically, it looks cool. Uh, I like the artwork and everything involved. So definitely check it out. If you're a Funkoverse fan, you know you're going to want to get this no matter what. But this is one of my favorite two-player sets. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!